So if you're a business manager or owner and somebody calls you and they say, hey, don't send any more shoes. Nobody wears shoes down here. And then another salesperson calls and says, send all the shoes you can because there's nobody wearing shoes down here. That manager or business owner has to make a decision. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about okay, so this making is, a decision. This is really wild. You know, I've spent years and years and years thinking about decision making. And there are so many things that just don't make sense to me, things that the experts say. And it's interesting in a different way, before I tell you the mindful theory of decision making, is I find that by and large, people are doing what they should be doing. And then the experts come along and label some of these behaviors in different ways, try to get them to behave differently. Um, and um, it, it fails, except it makes the person feel inadequate. Okay. So if you're supposed mm -hmm. to do a cost benefit analysis, the first thing is, how do you decide to decide? How can you do a cost benefit analysis? How do you decide that? How do you decide that? It becomes an infinite regress. But that's not really the main point. The main point is that mm -hmm. the more mindful you are, the more you know that anything that seems to be a cost could also be a benefit. Anything that's a benefit could also be a cost. You can't add them up. You know, plus one and minus one doesn't tell you what to do. Not only that, if you're mm -hmm. gathering information, how do you know when to stop? And each new piece of information could change mm -hmm. the sense of what you're doing. So, you know, I go through, um, I, I mm -hmm. try to be clear about this. It's very important. You know, people should read it in the book. Let me give everybody the bottom line. Rather than waste your time trying to make the right decision, make the decision right. Now, the main thing that, about that's decision exactly where I was making, going. Yep. Yeah. The main thing about decision making that people don't realize is that it's all based on prediction. You know, you have three out, three alternatives you're trying to decide among, all right? Or let's just make it two. Should you have an apple mm -hmm. or a pear? It's the same process if you're deciding, should I get an abortion or not? Should I buy the company or fold? You know, whatever it is. Okay. That if you're deciding, should I have an apple and a pear? The presumption that's mindless is that if I have that apple, it's going to taste like the last apple. And uh, there are so many mm -hmm. reasons why it might, in fact, be very different. I don't. That's probably not the most compelling example. But let me um, let me tell people if they don't realize it. Illusion. A prediction is an illusion. We cannot predict. You can't predict the individual case. So if I and anybody who wants to argue with this me with me, I'll make you a wager. Let's go to a Mercedes dealership. I was going to see a hundred cars, okay? Best cars, wonderful cars, right? Mm -hmm. And I say to you, we're going to randomly pick any car and start it up. If it starts, I'll give you um, a half a million dollars. If it doesn't start, you give me a half a million dollars. And most people will not take that bet because they know, look, sometimes things don't work. Even the best of us make mistakes. You know, sometimes uh, it's a limit. Right. All right. So, um, I, you know, I say to my class, this is a decision making class at Harvard graduate students. OK, I say to them, I have been coming to this class for uh, teaching this class for about 40 years. I have never missed a class. What is the likelihood that I'm going to be here next week? Okay, we go around the room, 15 people. They say ridiculous things. The first, you know, first one says 97%. How do you come to 97%? All he's really saying is that it's, he doesn't feel comfortable saying 100%, but that's what he thinks it is. So we go around and everybody, you know, basically says, I will definitely be there. Now I say, let's go around the room and each of you give me a good reason why I won't be there. The first one always says, which is amazing, um, well, you've been there all the time. You feel you should take the time off. The next one says your dog has to go to the vet. The next one says you get a flat tire. We get 12, 15 good reasons why I won't be there. Now I say, what is the likelihood I'm going to be there? And the 100% drops to 50%. Going forward, we have no idea. Looking back, you know, we're all Monday morning quarterbackers, right? Ah, I should have known that. Yeah, right, I did right. know that when going forward, you know. So um, because you can predict, 
Um, then, and I have, you know, one liner about predictions, uh, which you probably ask me next, which is, um, you know, this, this book that you're <laughs> reading from there is the art of noticing. And it's my paintings paired with one liners that were called from research over all these, you know, 45 years. And one of them says, yeah. predict today and lose tomorrow. And you know, so what that means mm -hmm. is that when you're making predictions, you're looking for particular, particular things. And the more uh, intensely mm -hmm. you're looking for X, the more likely it is you're not going to see Y. And so um, our predictions mm -hmm. blind us. In fact, everything we know blinds us. Do you know the study that Simon and Chabriz did? Wonderful study with the gorilla. This is unbelievable to people no. who have never heard this or seen it. Okay. Uh, people are watching a basketball game. And in the middle of the basketball game, a person dressed in a gorilla suit comes on the court. People do not see it. And it's hard to imagine that. Uh, but, you know, uh -huh. it's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that you see what you expect to see. And your predictions mm -hmm. set up your expectations. And then you don't see things that you don't expect to see, which is why you're better off not making these rigid predictions and then just mindfully being there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm that decision maker, I get the two salespeople calling me and I have to make a decision. <laughs> You're not suggesting that you don't still develop plans because being mindful is I'm always noticing new and different things and constructing different alternatives. Yeah, yeah. What correct? I'm suggesting is that we there's no right answer. You know, will they buy the shoes if you send, you know, 10,000 pairs of shoes there or won't they? There's no way to know. Um, that when you create a plan, at least mm -hmm. you feel you're doing something. But my alternative to wasting mm -hmm. our time trying to make the right decision is to make the decision right. So if you don't send the shoes yes. there, uh, then you open up another market someplace else. And if that's successful, then it doesn't matter. What's right. the difference if you sell them here or you sell them there? If you send them down to Africa, right. um, you, you know, look, lots of people in this world wear shoes. There has to be some advantage to wearing them. Mm -hmm. And so then the task becomes persuading people mm -hmm. of the real advantage um, and, you know, understanding that mm -hmm. there are also advantages going barefoot. Hi, Ted Wolf here. I want to thank you for joining us for this Implementers video. The Implementers podcast is presented by Guidewise, where we, along with our vetted member community, recognize that ideas are easy, but implementation is hard. To learn more about getting things done with Guidewise, please visit us at guidewise.io. And to conquer your implementation struggles, please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Happy implementing.